Hi, so I'm gonna do a video today on the full start to finish on a piece of brass fill material to show you the, um, the part itself, uh, bringing it into a slicer, sending it over to the printer, and then polishing up and seeing how it comes out. So uh, what gave me the thought on this was there's really not a lot of documentation on what to do with these materials. And I really, you know, I had this, this, this spool of the protopasta uh, brass filled material sitting around for the last couple months waiting for a chance to experiment with it. So I have this drawing that I want to do, which is a pretty big chandelier. And it'd be really cool to do a nice, brass chandelier so I don't have to spend a few thousand dollars at, at you know a big name brand company um, and I got this giant you know Modex 120x over here so I can do some pretty big parts with it so I started yesterday I said you know what the heck let's let's try I had a minute the printer was down uh, for, for a while so I started to whip this brass fill material out this, this brass protopasta spool out and printed out it, eh, it didn't look that great when it came off but once I started to sand it down, it really did start to take shape, just like they say online. So, in fact, this is the sample that I did yesterday. So it's pretty big. And yeah, I know some people would say that you can finish, finish parts in a rock tumbler. That's great. I have a rock tumbler. I tried out with a piece of steel field material from like a ring not too long ago. Um, eh, worked out okay. This is a bit too big for my rock tumbler, and some of the parts I'm gonna be doing are gonna be like that big around. So I'm gonna, I need like a 55 gallon drum rock tumbler. So uh, I really need to figure out, okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to sand these things down. And the other question too was, is it better for me to print out a part in brass for the brass material at like twice the cost and then sand it down and polish it? Or would it be better for me to print the part out in like ABS, which is gonna be a lot stronger and then uh, spray paint, some kind of, find some sort of way to paint it so that it looked like brass, you know, so no one's ever, ever gonna actually touch it. So anyway, in the meantime, what I'm gonna do right now is I figured, all right, well, I got a little bit, a little bit of material left, uh, so why don't I actually try a, a real piece that I can use and see how it's gonna weather over the next month or two in the cold. And um, what I came up with, um, frankly, at first I was gonna do a doorknob, I couldn't get it off, uh, but I could get, this lo uh, lock cover latch off, right? So I'm gonna try to go through the process and show you using this Modix, I'm printing out one of these and then sanding it down and see how it comes out. And I have it, I already put it in my, um, in my uh, Fusion 360 program over here. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty good. Um, it's like a little metal, kind of cool. And uh, very, very close. You know, I did a decent job programming it. I mean, it's, it's pretty scale. Um, there's gonna be some minor differences, but overall it's pretty good. And you, of course, you can sand this down a bit smooth if you want to. It looks, looks pretty much like the real thing, okay? So we got it ready, and now what I wanna do is I wanna bring it over to my slicing software, which is Simplify 3D, and here we go, Oops. all right. Got it all set in the middle of the left-hand side of the bed of this. You can see the size of the print bed for this thing versus this, this little guy, which is like an inch, inch and a half. So it's, it's pretty big. And I'm gonna double check my settings here. So this is brass protopasta. I'm gonna use a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. I tried using the 0.4. Like I said, it just, it just didn't work uh, with this material. It got clogged up right away. And I have heard people with clogs, and man, I mean, it was like instantaneous. Uh, you know, it just just didn't like it. The other thing that you're going to need to do is make sure that you're using a hard nozzle on this. So I've got the um, I've got a .80 Ruby Olsen Ruby uh, nozzle from you know Sweden, one of my favorite places. You know, Spalia, a little Svenska nozzle there. And um, as far as let's see, so let me run through here. Make sure I got things set. I got a .8 nozzle diameter. My layer, I'm running at 0.4. Um, that should be fine. My brain's down to 0.3, because I'd like to get a little bit more detail. Uh, don't, in addition, I'm just gonna do a, um, I'm gonna do a skirt on the outside, just to uh, empty out what's in there. And support material, really don't even need any on this. Uh, temperature, I'm running at 230 degrees. The heated bed temperature is at 60. 
You don't need any cooling on this. Uh, I don't need any G-code special stuff or scripts. And the speeds, I've got a 2400 is what I did yesterday um, because that was a big piece. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. I'll bring this down to 1200. Yeah. And I'll slow it down. And but then my uh, layer speed, my first layer print speed, I can raise that up. So I'm gonna raise that up. <clears throat> And outline under speed solid, okay. As far as infill goes, I'm going 100% infill. Because it's gonna be a solid piece in this case. Other and advantage, so I don't need anything there. So, I should be good to go. Let me prepare to print this. And we're gonna have 25 minutes to print this latch. All right, so we're gonna send this over to our printer and we're gonna see what happens. All right, and off we go. So, a few things to keep in mind on this, and blue tape works great. Um, obviously, you need to isopropyl alcohol it down or rubbing alcohol on top of that. And if you're in a bind, like uh, I was in COVID this past year, Windex works extremely well, easy to get and very cheap. So we'll let this run out, and you can see the color already. You know, again, it, it looks like mud, but uh, once we're done, we'll see what we've got. Anyhow, okay. So you can see here, all the best in the world, but amazing what some double grace will do. The back of course is pretty smooth. Um, so we have a lot of detail with the, the point eight. Uh, let's see what we can do here now. Another thing that you can do to these parts is you can anneal them so you can cook it in um, the oven at 100 degrees Celsius, so 212 degrees Fahrenheit for about uh, 10 minutes or so. And that'll make them stronger, but I'm not concerned about this being strong. I mean, it's just a latch or a latch cover or mock cover or whatever. So my, my primary interest right now is shining this up and seeing how it comes out. Okay, let's, let's start with uh, 60 grit now and um, All right, and now we're on the one fifth. Okay, that was fun. So actually, these came out pretty good. Uh, I mean, again, different color. This is brass. This is more of a, a dark painted brass or steel, probably more of a steel, uh, but same size. You know, pretty much same thickness after I sanded it down. And then let's look at the detail of this. So the, between the two, you look at this, this one was more of a, was actually more kind of a distressed look on one side and kind of a smooth um well it's probably it was smooth it's kind of been outside so it's a little dirty smooth but anyway but kind of a distressed look on this side here and so i decided to stay with that on this uh the a couple things and i used a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on this so of course i had some layer lines on the top those are pretty much mostly gone now and the way i did that was I took the, uh, since I was gonna go with the distressed look anyway, um, I just took a uh, uh, soldering iron and just kinda soldering ironed a couple of spots that I didn't like. And then pulled out the grinder on my Dremel, as you saw, and uh, that's actually pretty forgiving on this, especially if you're gonna go with kind of a distressed look, uh, because it is, it does have a lot of brass in it, it takes that grinder pretty well on the stone grinder part. So you can see, that it 
has uh, some stress spots in it, you know? Uh, but as far as shininess goes on a brass side versus a darkened steel, that's not too bad. It looks like brass. I mean, it does. It, it really looks like brass. And that's, that's with 150 grit. I'm not sure I'd go much more than that, you know? In fact, reading up, I, I, I um, saw a review from a guy who had gone all the way up to make it, maybe a thousand grit or so and said it started to look like, he said it started to look more like plastic again. So overall, now on the, the weight, as far as the weight goes, this is definitely heavier for uh, PLA, which, which I mean, it's surprisingly for PLA, PLA. This is heavier. Um, it might be pretty much the same. So this is definitely heavy. You can, you can feel the weight difference in it, but this is definitely heavier than your plastic. Sound, the quality, I mean, there's that. Okay, so you could, this sounds more like a poker chip, you know? Um, that sounds like actual metal. But for somebody that's gonna use this, this is not bad. And it, it definitely feels durable. So I'm gonna put it outside on my lock, give it a, a month or so see how it looks. I hope that helps. I don't think that there's really much else I can add to it. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the rock tumbler. I wouldn't use this in a rock tumbler because it's gonna wear down all edges and become paper thin and fall apart. Um, you're just gonna have to bear and grin it Use heat to, to smooth that out if you need to, and then uh, just find a way to find a good way to sand it. So good luck with it. I hope this helps. If you like this video, please like it and uh, try to follow me if you can, and you can find some more fun videos. Thank you very much.